Hello everybody and welcome back. My name is Carrie and today I'm doing the mid-year book freakout tag. I don't know the original creator of this book, nobody's tag or of this tag, and nobody has tagged me, but I see it going around about this time and I thought that it'd be fun to do it. So let's get started. The first question is what is the best book you've read thus far? And I have two for that because I, I couldn't decide. So the first one is Children of Blood and Bone by Tomi Adeyemi. It's a West African based story about a girl who can practice magic, or she could if magic existed in the world, except that this king ruthlessly obliterated magic in her world, and now she has to go on a quest to get it back. Amazing, amazing, amazing book. And the next one comes out next year. I'm beyond excited. And then the other one is on the completely opposite end of the spectrum, and that is 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea by Jules Verne. I didn't anticipate liking this one so much, but loved it. Uh, you follow a professor, his assistant, a shipmate of theirs, and Captain Nemo, because the first three of them get basically trapped on Captain Nemo's giant submarine in the 1860s. The descriptions in this book were amazing, and I just really loved it for a reason I cannot explain. The next question is the best sequel that you read this year, and for this one I went with... it's technically a sequel because it's in the same sort of world, but it's more of a companion novel, so I'm cheating a little bit, but I'm okay with that. And that is The Forgotten Book by Mechtilde Glazer. This is the companion to The Book Jumper, which came out January 2017. In this book, you follow a young girl who is in a boarding school in Germany with her father, who runs the place. And she finds this book that's just been sitting around in this old castle for eons. And suddenly, she starts writing in it because it's a diary. Except that which, what she writes in the diary turns out to be real. It comes to life, essentially. Fantastic book loved it. And also, cover. Number three is a new release that you haven't read yet, and while I'm not necessarily proud of this, it is The Burning Maze, which is the third book in the Trials of Apollo series by Rick Riordan. I haven't read this because it came out in May, and I'm still not big on wanting to read new YA right now. Also, The Bar. So I don't necessarily have the time or effort that I want to put into this book because I know it's going to be great but I want to actually like it and not feel awful about it because my head is so full of the rule against perpetuities which I still can't figure out. But anyway, this one I have not read. I'm planning on getting to it after I take the bar. Uh, number four is the most anticipated release for the second half of the year. And for me, that is definitely the third book in the Lycanius trilogy by James Islington. I have the first two, I read the first two this year, and the third one comes out in August. I'm thrilled for that one because there are just so many questions going through my head after the second one that I need it to come out. Number five is The Biggest Disappointment, and that definitely goes to The Whiskey Sea. This one is about a young woman who starts rum running in the 1920s off the coast, the east coast of the states, and basically it's romance focused and not rum running focused, which was not at all what I wanted and I just felt really let down by that book. Number six is The Biggest Surprise of the Year, and as I've already alluded to, that is definitely 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea by Jules Verne. Like I said, did not at all expect to like this book as much as I did, but it is one of my new favorites, all-time favorites, because the descriptions are just so vivid and the atmosphere is omnipresent. It's amazing and indescribable. I also just think this edition is really cute. Uh, number seven is your favorite new author. Well, this can be a author that's got a new book or an author that is new to you. I went with an author that is new to me, um, and there were a lot of them. Tomi Adeyemi is both new to me and a new author, and she's definitely one of my favorites. But for the sake of not repeating myself, I went with Jessica, Jessica Day George, who wrote the Dragon Slippers series, as well as Tuesdays in the Castles and the rest of that series. These are definitely a middle grade fantasy, but they are so much fun. Loved them when I read them. I read this trilogy in a weekend because it, they're just really easy to read and they're fun. This trilogy follows a young woman 
who discovers that she has a special affinity with dragons and so with her new dragon friends she has to save the kingdom. It's a little bit like Dealing with Dragons which is one of my all-time favorite books so that might be why I love this one so much. Number eight is your newest fictional crush. I don't really have any new ones. I mean I've always kind of had a crush on Cimmerian from Dealing with Dragons and definitely Aragorn from Lord of the Rings which I also read this year but I can't really think of any new crushes, so that's what we're going with. Number nine is your newest favorite character, and that definitely goes to Creel, the main character from Dragon Slippers. She's just very independent, and she reacts like you would expect a young woman between the ages of 16 and 20 to act when she comes across dragons and has to save the kingdom and go into war and all that ridiculous stuff that happens in fantasy books, and I just thought it was really well done. Number 10 is a book that made you cry. I haven't read one this year. I read one last year, and that was All the Gallant Men by Don Stratton. It is a memoir of Pearl Harbor by a Pearl Harbor survivor. But I haven't read one this year, so there's that. Number 11 is a book that made you happy, and for that I went with Jane Unlimited by Kristen Cashore. First of all, the cover, both the ja dust jacket and the fact that there's a holographic umbrella on the naked cover just made me so happy. Second of all, I love the motifs in this book. The frogs and the umbrellas. This was just a fun, wacky book that I'm still not sure I understand, but I loved. Number 12 is the best book to movie adaptation you've seen. I haven't seen one. I didn't go to see Ready Player One because I haven't read the book and I have really very, very little interest in that. And same with Love, Simon. I haven't read and have no intention of reading Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda simply because it's a contemporary and as you may have noticed I don't really read a lot of contemporaries. I think maybe I own four. Maybe. So I haven't seen a book to movie adaptation yet. But if I do, I am really excited about Crazy Rich Agents, which will come up in a minute. 13 is your favorite video that you filmed this year. For the sake of it was a really big accomplishment in my life, I'm going with my graduation video, which was posted about a month and a half ago. Uh, I graduated law school, which in, in and of itself is a huge accomplishment, and then I posted a video about law-related books or books about lawyers because, I don't know, it sounded fun, and so I really enjoyed filming that video even though the robes were incredibly hot. That's my favorite video. Number 14 is the most beautiful book you've bought this year. I'm going with bought or were given because I buy a lot of beautiful books, but the first one that came to mind was one that was given to me for graduation by my friend Katie, who came up to North Dakota um, to spend some time with me in graduation. Katie came up for graduation. She gave me Norse Myths and Tales, which, first of all, I'm pure Scandinavian. Like, we've been Norwegian and Swedish for eons and eons, so that's just Norse. It's very fun. And second of all, this book's cover I mean the blue on the black is just stunning. So I definitely had to go with this one because it's just beautiful. And the last question, number 15, is books that you need to read by the end of the year. I have several for this because who of us doesn't? But the first one is the third in the Lycanius trilogy by James Islington. I can't remember the name of it right now, but when it comes out I'll let you know. At any rate, I'm really excited to see that because I want to know so badly how that trilogy ends. The next one, which I also alluded to, is Crazy Rich Asia Asians by Kevin Kwan. I really want to read this one because it was recommended by Joss over at Schools Reads, and it just sounds fun and different from the YA contemporaries that are usually recommended. So I'm looking forward to that. Also, there is a movie coming out, I want to say in August, but I could be wrong. Either way, it's coming out later this year, I think, so I'm excited to read this and then compare. I also want to read Winter Palace by Eva... Oh, I should have looked this up. Stopniak? I'm sorry about the mispronunciation because I know that's wrong. Um, but I want to read this one because it's about Catherine the Great and I recently watched um, Ekaterina on Prime, which is in Russian with English subtitles all about Catherine the Great or Catherine the Second and that just piqued my curiosity and this book has been sitting on my shelf for years. And then the last book that I included on this list about wanting to get to this year is The Map of Time by Felix J. Palma. I mentioned this I think in my June TBR? May TBR? May. Uh, because I thought I was going to have a lot more time and it turned out I didn't have as much time in May as I thought I was going to. So sometime before the end of this year I really want to get to this book which is about 
fictional characters and real people disappearing and H.G. Wells has to go find them and figure out what's going on. Those are all the books for the mid-year book freakout tag. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a big thumbs up down below. If you want to see more content like this, hit that subscribe button down below. Hit that bell icon if you want to be notified every time I post. I post regularly on Tuesday and Saturday and sometimes bonus videos if I have time mostly, which that's iffy right now. But at any rate, I will also leave my Goodreads link down below if you want to keep up with what I read. But until my next video, bye.